Hi, my name is Jeremiah Grossman, and I am the founder and CEO of White Hat Security. And today we're going to talk about something called browser intranet hacking. It's a little no subject in website security, specifically browser security, that not a lot of people know about. It was technically discovered back in 2006, but for a variety of reasons, uh, the web is still vulnerable to it. Actually, everybody's browser is vulnerable to it. It doesn't matter if you use Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer. Every internet can be penetrated from the outside using browsers as a platform for attack. So let me show you how this works. So here's the concept, browser intranet hacking. And the first thing I have to describe is corporate intranet security. So when we all go to work, we get on the corporate intranet and we're surrounded by a giant firewall. And the firewall says that no one from the outside world, let's say the bad guy, is, can able, is able to send traffic into the corporate network. They send traffic in and they get blocked. The firewall says nothing from the outside, nothing at all. Now, if you're inside the corporate network, you know, if you're, you know, you're sitting here and you have your browser, you're on the network, and the network will be uh, IP address uh, 192. something, 10. something, standard non routable internet IP addresses. IP addresses that we can't get to from the outside because of the way the internet works. So this person here can get to all the internal corporate systems. Anything with a web interface internal, the person on the inside can get to, but the bad guy here can't. So the question is, how does the bad guy bypass the perimeter corporate network firewall to get access to these crown jewels on the inside? So that's what we're going to describe here. To, to set up this particular concept, what you have to be familiar with is just general web page functionality. So if you are a, a person with a browser, when you go to a website, this is you and your browser, this is anybody, they go to a website, and a web page will be code, HTML and JavaScript normally. And inside the page will be, mm, let's say, in, image tags. Image, source, equals. And then you put a web address, HTTP, colon, and then some website address here. When we visit a web page, when we visit a web page with Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, or whatever browser, your, bro your, your browser goes to a website and downloads all the HTML and JavaScript code. In the code, there's an image source you know, that instructs your browser to, that says, you need, Mr. Browser, you need to call an image from this server somewhere on the internet and pull it an image. This web page instructs your browser to do an HTTP request. Browsers, by extension of the way the web works, can force your browser to make any web request it wants to any location on the internet. So normally you're surfing a production internet accessible web page is going to go, please request a web page from the internet somewhere on the internet. And that goes for everybody. So if you are inside the network and you make a web request to here, your web request will be to a 192 network to get an image or something on the HR portal. Now, if you want to access something on the intranet, but you're the bad guy out here, you can't route in because of the way the, the firewall is designed and the way the IP addresses are routed. So this is what the bad guy does. So let's say this web page is the evil web page. Okay, this is the bad guy's web page. And he's convinced or somehow manipulated a person to go and visit that web page. They've emailed you a link. They've instant messaged it to you any number of ways. You're the victim over here, and what the bad guy wants is something over here. You make a web request, you land on the bad guy's web page here, any web page on the internet. Now, what the bad guy does is he says, image source equals, and he points to something on the internal network. 192.168, something on your internal web address. So what happens is when you download this code, it doesn't execute here. The code comes back to your browser here and executes within this context here. So then your browser is actually the bad guy's attack platform. It forces your browser to make web requests to, you can make your web requests to any location, to here, to here, or any place you can get to. Now, the web page can force your browser to make any type of web request. Get requests, post requests, put data, 
pack data and radio it all back out to the bad guy. So since you're on the corporate intranet with a browser, and if you go to a web page that they control, it's very simple to bypass the corporate firewall and to get access to all these things, even though you're physically not there. The browser vendors, uh, for a variety of reasons, have not fixed this. This is the way the web works, uh, even to this day. Internet Explorer has a, a few protections against this, but it's not complete, but Firefox and Chrome are definitely exposed to this particular issue. So the question is, okay, well, how does the bad guy know where to get the user to connect to? I mean, they don't have much knowledge in here. And that is actually, there's two answers to that one. One is, is that the network IP addresses, the non-routable IP addresses for corporate networks are well defined by our RFC standard, RFC 1918. And so most everybody is running on 192 or the 10 networks and sometime one called 172. Now, even if the bad guy doesn't really know which one to start from, there's only, you can, they, can, uh, they can start guessing, brute forcing it, and they can force your browser to connect to all these in roughly a minute or two of viewing the web page. So they can just brute force it. So what we also have to remember is everybody on the corporate network can be a victim. So even if we just got one person for that company, we can still get everybody else and keep trying and keep doing network reconnaissance. Um, now, the victim here, because the way the web works and the way browser securities work, the bad guy can only force your browser to send requests here, but the bad guy, without leveraging another vulnerability like cross-site scripting, can't read the data back. The bad guy can only force your browser to, to hack these systems or to send data. Now, if the bad guy can force your browser to cross-site script these other locations with another vulnerability, then they'll get read access. But it's not to say that they can't say, add a user here just by sending a well-formed request or delete all your code in the repository or make an outbound call. That to send data is no big deal. To read it requires one more vulnerability. So once we understand these concepts, the browser intranet hacking technique, the next question is then how do we protect ourselves from this? If, if we're a, a user like the other two billion people online, how do we protect ourselves? Now, as I mentioned before, most every browser is vulnerable to this. Um, Firefox, Internet Explorer, actually they do the best job so far, uh, Chrome and Safari. And the problem is, is that they don't make any distinction between public IP addresses and private IP addresses. It's all the same to the browser. So what we did in White Hat's browser, White Hat Aviator, is we made the distinction. Aviator, I'll write the name down, which is a, a White Hat Securities browser, it's available for free on our website. What it does not do, it does not allow the browser to make the connections to these IP addresses. They are banned by the connection rules of the browser. You can allow it with rules, but by default, when, you, when Aviator is surfing the web and some web page wants to force your browser to make a connection to 192 or a 10 network, it goes no. So when you're surfing the public internet and you're concerned about internet hacking, you use Aviator.